so guys I am at the 19th village council inauguration here in Kolyo and my boy is gonna be the chairman of the council man can you imagine the progress this brother and I'm very 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 proud of Mitchell for doing so much man he started on YouTube doing agricultural stuff you know elevating teaching persons how to do farming you know I think he's gonna be a really really good chairman for the council especially in doing different things in agriculture so big up to Mitchell one time for doing his thing I, Mitchell John, I, Mitchell John, do affirm that I will, I will, well and faithfully discharge, well and faithfully discharge, the duties of a member, the of a member, of the village council of Colio, of the village council of Colio. That's my brother. is none other than Mr. Mitchell Your Excellency Charles A. Sagre and Mr. Sagre, Honorable Captain Daniel, Minister of Social Services, Family and General Affairs, other members of Cabinet, members of the Diplomat Diplomatic Corps, and that. Take your time, boys. Take your time. You can do it. Ambassadors, Commander Secretary on the Ministry of Social Services, uh, Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs. Justice of the Peace, Mr. Ronald Turok, Pastor, Media, or Board Chairman, she's not here, and other members of the Polish Village Council, and invited guests and villagers by large. Thank you very much for coming to this 19th inaugural meeting or ceremony of the Polish Village Council. On behalf of the Polish Village Council, I would like to thank everyone, every single member of the village who exercised their yeah, right to vote at the Colliver Council general election. Your vote was very important and we voted for five elected members and the honorable Ms. Kathleen Daniel placed three nominees. And at the end of the day, we have eight members that we have to respect. And irrespective of what happened before, I believe that we can move forward and grow Colliho. I believe that we can move forward and be a more proactive community. I've got some messages that I hope will impact everyone that can contribute to the village. Okay, so first thing first to our community. I would like to encourage you to work with the Colin Village Council. We are the new council and we are going to be here for three years if God will. And we, we desire that you work with us for us to develop the community. And there are some concerns and suggestions that comes from the community. And some of you do not give concerns and suggestions to the council and you give it elsewhere. Eight of us, we are available to you. We are here to serve you. So if you have concerns, if you have suggestions that you would like to see happen in the community, do not hesitate to call upon us. Your right is to call upon every single member of the Colony Village Council to express your concern. And of course, I would like to encourage you to be open-minded as we develop our community. I, I don't have the bottle with me, but I really was hoping I could have gotten a WD-40 bottle. And th there's a reason why I wanted to bring the WD-40 bottle. Anyone knows the story of the WD-40? It took 40 tests, 40 tests before it got the right formula to create the WD-40. As a community, I would like us to be open-minded and to consider the fact that we cannot give up on situations. You all told me as a former councillor, that things have happened before and you do not want to take the risk or you do not want to join in or you do you will your fellow. But I would like to tell you, do not give up. Because if the maker of WD-40 had stopped at number 38, you would not have this important fellow that we have right now. <laughs> Message to the youth. 
the youth in calling home, I would like to send a message to every single one. So now I'm talking to the youth. To the youth, listen to those who are older than you. Listen to those who have experienced life. Because many times, many times, when young persons get advice from elders or older persons, they turn it down and they want to do their own thing. But they, there's a reason why older persons will give you advice, because they have gone through the cycle, they have gone through life, and they try to protect you, some of them, and you need to use your discretion, of course, to know which ones are there to protect you, but you have to listen to the advice of those who are older than you. And of course, respect elderly and those in authority. This goes for the pastors, the police, the councillors, the parliamentary representative, we have to learn to respect those in authority if we want to go far in life. Other than the fact that we see who respect who, but God Almighty himself sees who respects who. And he would like us to respect those in authority and those who are elders. Message to central government. Of course, it will not be fair if I give a message to everyone except I'm not give to central government. And of course, I hope that my suggestion and my dialogue will be accepted with open arms, of course. Communicate with council. This is very important. I have been on the council for six months because I went through my election. And that was a concern that villagers had. Anytime an activity would be happening in the community from central government, they would meet me and ask other councillors to what's going on. And I think it's a shame that we will say we don't know. If we had a council, local, local government, those who are given the responsibility to govern the village, it's a shame that we will say we don't know. So I'm hoping that this new council will motivate central government to communicate with us information and ideas with us so we can have the information in our minds so that when the villagers come to us, we'll be able to express to them what, uh, what's really going on in the community. <coughs> and of course, the village consultation. Have consultation with the villagers. It's one thing as those in authority to do something we think is good for the people. But the people sometimes are concerned as to what they would like to see happen in the community. And we, if we do not have consultation, we can build something for a community and they will not appreciate it if they do not have the desire to actually see the community. So this is something I would like to really encourage central government to do. Communicate with the council and have more consultation in the community. Talk about meetings that I believe one is coming up soon and this is very, very good for the community. And of course, I have got one more suggestion to make to central government. And this is one that every young person now, especially the young men, and I feel very bold and confident in saying this with no fear, not, no fear at all. The young persons are concerned about the playing field. They have expressed time and time again that they would like to see something done about the playing field. Again, in my capacity as council and the former council, I tried my best to get the information, but again, I was told that central government is dealing with it. Consultation is again very important when it comes to the village. Perhaps that's the point. Perhaps that's what's going on, that central government is dealing with it. But we should not leave villagers. We should not leave the people wondering what is going on. Because if the people do not know the information that's happening, they will make assumptions. And assumptions can lead to deadly consequences. Assumptions can lead to a lot of breakups and a lot of unnecessary agreements. So I'd like to encourage central government to please, on behalf of the young men and the young people, consult with us and dialogue, have a dialogue with us as to what is going on with the playing field. And this isn't a concern of mine. This is a concern of the young people, the young men. Because when our young men or our young persons commit crimes, when our young men or our young persons go down the wrong road, we are quick to judge, we are quick to say that they do not have, they, they are rebellious. But sometimes they are asking for one simple thing and we need to consider giving it to them because they are our future. And if we do not consider what it is that they want, they will go another route and then the other route will be, be an embarrassment for the community. And no one in the community, I believe, would like to see community embarrassed by bad news. And while I'm talking about young persons, I would just like to sympathize with the theologian family on the passing of Bradley Philogen, a very proactive young man in the community, a former co-worker of mine, and irrespective of how he was, Bradley was a villager, and Bradley deserved respect as a human being. Yeah. I hope indeed that those in authority, I hope indeed that those in authority would please ensure that justice is, justice is done on behalf of Bradley Philogen. Bradley Philogen is a human being. He has a family. 
And I'm hoping that those in authority in the judicial system will consider that Bradley have a family. Of course, let it be done properly in the judicial system because not everyone that goes before the courts is guilty, of course. There are those who are in the first time of the are Message to counselors, of course, if I do give you all a message, that will not be fair. So message to counselors, please share the relevant information with villagers. Just as we do not want villagers to wonder what's going on with central government plan for the community, we do not want villagers to wonder what's going on with plans from the council. So I'd like to encourage counselors, when it's necessary to give out information to villagers, give it out, whether in person or via the social media, because if the information is can be given out directly to someone in the village. We can also give out the information to our villagers or our Koreans who are in the diaspora. Listen to the villagers' concern. Do not turn down villagers when they are coming and talk to you. Do not say, I'm too busy. Because they made the time and sacrifice to come and vote. They were not too busy to come and vote. They made the time. They made the time and sacrifice to come out and vote. So please, listen to the concern of the villagers. If you have to work with a small notebook to write down what they say, because I know we have a lot to say. So at the same time, if you can't remember, always write it down, so that when we have our meetings, which I'm hoping to have more than one meeting a month, because as a council, as local government, it's necessary that we have at least two, three, it was up to be five, but we'll stick to two points in meetings for the month. And of course, councillors, I'd like to encourage you to work with the relevant authorities, namely our parliamentary representative. We have to work with our parliamentary representative because this is the one that God has placed in this authority. This is the one that God Almighty, who was not asleep when she became the parliament, God put her there. So we have to work with her. Because if we do not work with her, the community will go nowhere. So we have to ensure that we put our differences aside. And I must acknowledge that we all have differences. But when it comes to community development, when it comes to working for the community, we have to put these differences aside and work together as one unit. That's very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Fairness and equality. This is the next concern that I have. And let me take away I. But this is the concern that the villagers have. Fairness and equality. Every single one of us here have a talent. Every single one of us here have a skill. And if those in authority do not acknowledge or respect the skills of our people in the village, they will leave. Yeah. And one day we will meet them and it will be too late. Harness the skills, harness the skills and, activity and skills and talent of every villager. Allow them the opportunity to be employed. Allow them the opportunity to develop themselves. Because we are not here for anything except for our community. And even if I don't like A, and if A, can, if a is good at fishing, and I neglect to actually help A in doing what he's doing, I will end up eating porridge all year. We have to ensure that we, we, have to ensure that we put our differences aside and help those with the talent and their skills. And of course, one way that we can do that, and I, there's a solution I've got in mind. Again, I'm trying to be secure with the eye, but there's a solution that came to mind. And what we hope to do, well, I'm, after I have a dialogue with the council, just to the council member, and I'm quite sure they will entertain that idea, is to allow all villagers the opportunity to let the council know what is their skill and their talents, so that we can actually put it in such a way that we can send this information to central government. We can have that information with us. We can give that information to different groups, so that when and also non-profit organization, so that when they have plans and when they have proposals for the community, they will already have a list of those who can cook, those who can sew, those who are good in construction, those who are good in electricity, farming, and all the rest. We need to ensure that we consider and we think of every villager because if we put them in the back burner, I'm guaranteeing you the food will not cook properly. We have to ensure that we allow every single person the opportunity to use their talents. What are the plans for the community, you might be wondering. I've got a long list, and this long list has nothing to do with only what I saw. Before I, before I became chairman, I, was, I won the by-election, and I went around, because I, I like to set examples. I, like, I don't want to tell anyone the consultation that I don't do it myself. So I went around, I went around, and I, I listened 
to the plans I listen to the concern that some villagers have. Now before I mention this plan or before I mention this concern, there's one thing that I hope to see happen in Collier. This is the 19th inaugural meeting. Collier Village Council is in existence for more than 50 years. And one thing I desire, I will now entertain the eye. One thing that I desire to see is that we own our own office. I desire to see that we own our own office to allow us the ability to actually cut on costs. And by cutting on costs, we can then take that funds, and we will do fundraising, I get to it. We can then take that, we can then take that fund and put it back into a community. Whether it's I'm giving help to an elder, whether it's offers a scholarship or bursary to a student, the main thing is that we will cut costs by having our own office. And it's about time that we have our asset in Polyho. It's about time that we have an asset. I don't know if you know the importance of having a land title. I don't know if you know the importance of having a home. But it's very important and vital that we have it. And I would like the Polyho Village Council to set an example to motivate villagers to have their own assets. And the best way to do that, I believe, is to own our own village council office. So I hope, of course, this... So I hope, of course, this desire will not fall on deaf ears, but some persons, and eventually when we bring that information out, and when we have plans and whatever is necessary to actually construct an office, that this will be entertaining. I really hope that it will be entertaining. Now let's get to the plans or the requests or the, the whole desire that the community has. First thing first, a villager told me a speed bump is needed by the bus stop. Woo! A villager told me that a speed bump is needed by the bus stop. And it's not just a desire. We have one too many accidents here. And no one of you is less important. And I don't want to, I cannot imagine what it felt like when the bus had the accident and one villager sustained some injuries. It could be one of you, it could be one of your children, and every single one of us are hoping it's important to each other. Widening of the drains in the back road from Eli coming down, not that Eli, but Ayo, hopefully to widen that drain because during, during Tropical South America, we saw some, we saw some of the effect of that drain being too narrow and a villager to express concern about that drain being too narrow. And I, as I always say, I do not turn down the suggestion and request of any villager because that is their rights. Being up to, of course, build a bin, a concrete garbage bin, Laplas and non Laplas and a home ago. Because again, Erika took the one that was there, so we need to actually build another one. Bulletin board in the central point of the village, where the village fits into why beautiful village we really have. Lampposts in the back road, and of course, by the end of the school over there. Widening of the village drains sent in the, from Arlington John's property all the way down to Jean's shop. This drain is too small because long ago when this drain was built, it was built when there were wooden houses and shacks and not concrete houses with big roofs and water and only water going in there. And some villagers are concerned that the house are below level and the water is going straight within their property. Construction of a bus stop or shelter in the back road, a villager, two villagers expressed that concern to me. Fencing of the Laplace Dam, that is something that we desired to do in the last council and I'm hoping that we can do this time around. Car park and improvement of the bayside. Big improvement by the base side. And while I'm here to encourage villagers to respect the signs of council when it says no littering, please respect this because this is our community. It's very sad that we have to be so forceful to tell persons do not litter. It's quite easy to keep your waste on the garbage or white goods on your property till we do a white good. And I'm hoping then that you will complain to the village council and say, I've got a fridge in my head for so long, when am I going to do white good? And this is what you have to do, and that's how we will know it's time for us to do a white good collection. For the only time that we will schedule to do that. And of course, improve the bay, the bayside, improve the bayside, and that will have to do the garbage disposal, as I said. And of course, improve the basketball court and install lights. That was a concern that young persons had. That when they are playing in the night, as it's getting dark, they just have to give up and go home. But they really want to ensure that everybody get their fair chance in scoring some goals at the basketball court. So we really want to consider putting lights at least for the young persons up there. Removal of derelict vehicles, which, as we know, is not really a good sight, and of course it's in the traffic, and it can also attract bugs and mosquitoes and these kinds. And I'm not done yet, don't worry, I'm on this <laughs> And I would like to council would like to be an advocate for the village. 
we have to speak out on behalf of the village to central government. And one, with every few things that they are expressing that they would like to see happen. And that has to do with the river wall. They need a river wall, that's what the village is saying. Construction of the school bridge, that's what the village is saying. Construction of waterway drain. Construction of waterway drain at the back by Mr. Lequent up on the hill. Some villages are concerned. And we got a letter within the last council and we're hoping to help them by facilitating facilitating the parliamentary representative for some dialogue on how we can help that part of the village. Because the water from the hill comes straight down to the house and in the area we are drawn out and we don't want we don't want any villagers to lose their home. Because as I said, we should know the importance of having a land title and an asset. And of course as I come to an end, human development, mentorship, I, we are hoping, therefore, that we can have some mentorship program where we can facilitate the young persons to have mentorship with those who are skilled and talented because these skills will eventually go if we do not have mentorship. They always say the richest place is not the bank, the richest place is not the government office, the richest place is not the school, the richest place is in the cemetery because everyone is dying of their skills and talent and ability and they do not pass on their knowledge. So I can say, I And of course, another thing that we are hoping to have is using the empty lots to do gardening. If you know me well, anyone that knows me well, I love backyard gardening. I love the idea of growing what you eat and eating what you do. Okay, One sure. thing we're hoping to see is use of the lots, the empty lots in the village. As much as you tell persons to keep the lots clean, keep the lots clean. How about we have some program where we have young persons tending to this lot by having some memorandum of understanding with the village council and the owners where we allow them to plant on these lots. And by planting on these lots, this will stimulate the mind to see the importance of agriculture, to see the importance of eating healthy, and that will possibly give them desire to run up Opito and have some open some garden up in the air. Of course, workshop for villagers. Um, as I conclude, I would just like to say that most times we would hear, write a proposal, write a proposal, write a proposal. And most persons do not know how to write a proposal. So hopefully what I desire to, what we at the council desire to see is that we have a program where villagers get the opportunity to learn how to write proposals and do budgeting. I think it's very important that we do this thing. And one of my like to encourage young persons, your parents have the skills, some of you have the education. You have to work together. The strongest force is the family. The family is the one, the strongest force. And if our family is weak, our community will definitely be weak. So I'd like to encourage villagers, families and chief families, parents, have children, have one, work, work on together, have a unit together, help each other when necessary. And of course, entrepreneurship. And let me just, I don't want to tell central government only what to do, but I would like to thank central government. During Trump because of Erica, central government came out, why? They came out massive, they came out full force to help the village of Colin. And I'd like to express gratitude. I was hoping that the outgoing chairman would have been there to say that. But I was saying I'd like to express gratitude and thankfulness to central government and of course the president for his charity who have shown love to the village of Colin, who have shown love to us as a person, as people. And we need to appreciate that. Even if we have things we don't like, but we need to give persons their flowers when they're alive. To say thank you, thank you very much. To say thank you, central government, for helping the community. Thank you, central government, for working with the parliamentary representative to ensure that we get what is necessary in the village and what we hope to achieve more in the village. Thank you very much. And as I conclude, I would just like to thank all those of you who have come out in large numbers. Large as it might seem small, but I believe it's large because the Bible says we're two or three are gathered. God is there, God is there, God is there for two or three. He's here. And I just want to thank you very much for coming today. And I do hope you got to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.